So in this video, I'm going to show you how to create these crab cake sliders. I do have a video that I will link that shows you how to create crab cakes and I wanted to make them into sliders. So everything, your grocery list and the measurements will be in the description box. The very first thing that you need is going to be some jumbo lump crab meat. I got this from GFS, which is Gordon Foods. So what we're going to do first is break through the jumbo lump crab meat. You do want to break through it because there could be shells. Um, the jumbo kind is not a lot of shells, but you still want to do it. If you do skip this step, if you decide to do that, make sure that you do understand that if you bite a shell, it could crack or break your tooth. So I went through mine. I didn't find any better safe than sorry. So now we're going to season the crab meat. These ingredients again are in the description box. We're going to start off with one tablespoon of dried parsley, one teaspoon of rubbed sage. Please use rubbed sage. Do not use ground sage. What you're going to do with the rubbed sage is you're going to put it in your hand first. Don't directly put it into the crab meat. You're just going to rub it together just a little bit to release more of those fumes. And then you're going to take one and one half tablespoon of Old Bay. Do not overpower this with Old Bay. A lot of people put a lot of Old Bay in this recipe. does not call for that much. So the next thing that we're going to add is going to be one packet of the orange pack of Zazan. If you do not know what Zazan is, it is a Mexican seasoning salt. It is a flavor enhancer, so it will enhance the flavors that is already in your mixture. So next we are going to take one whole lemon and we are going to peel the outside of the lemon. You want to do three peels and I'll show you why I'm doing this in the next clip. But you do want to make sure you are peeling the yellow and not the white. You do not have to peel the whole lemon unless you are making more than one can of the jumbo lump crab meat. So the reason why we are doing this is because we are going to mince the lemon peels. This is something that I do with all the seafood just to give it that fresh flavor. So right here I'm just showing you that these are the three peels. Now we're going to mince it. So the way that you mince it is you want to do julienne slices first and then you want to proceed in slicing that into very small fine cubes. So you do want to take your time doing this as you can see. Um, I pile them all on top of each other. Um, you do not have to do that. You can slice them individually if you want, but you do. Again, you want minced. Now, if you do not feel comfortable enough mincing this, you can just go ahead and grate it. But then once you grate it, you do want to run the knife back through just so you have the fine pieces. Now, if you do not want to mince it at all, or if you just do not want the lemon minced in your mixture, you do not have to do it. You can skip this step and then just add the lemon juice. But this to me adds a lot more flavor. I've been doing this for a decade now. I've always did this with all seafood. So if you're worried about biting a piece of lemon and it being really tart, um, this is not really a problem. It will cook down from the steam and the oil and butter when you actually cook the crab cakes or whatever it is that you cook if you do this technique. So we want this really fine. So you are going to chop it the first time and then you're going to run your knife back through so you can get the small cubes as I'm explaining here so you just want to keep running it back through until you feel like it's at your desired size so i did mine i think five or six times just ran a knife back through if you decide to zest your lemon um please keep in mind that it will not give off as much flavor as mincing it mincing it will actually season the oil that you are cooking the crab cakes in so you'll get a fresher taste so it should look just like this once you're done, as you can see, it's nice and finely chopped. Okay, Snapchat. So not only can you use this for this dish right here, if you are doing a seafood boil, you can put this in a cheesecloth, tie it up with some other herbs, and then drop that in there. And it will steam it, and it will make it taste way better. So now what we're going to do is we are going to preserve this minced lemon. We are going to do that by simply putting it in a container, you're going to cover it and you're going to refrigerate it. Just let it sit in the refrigerator. If you sit it out, it will get hard and it will dry out. So we're going to continue seasoning the crab meat. You're going to add one teaspoon of freshly cracked black pepper. And then we're going to add two pinches of that minced lemon. 
So if you have more crab meat, if you do two cans or two containers, you want to add two more pinches per container. So now we're going to add one tablespoon of garlic powder and then we are just going to combine all of these ingredients together. We're gonna add some more in the next couple clips, but you do want to get the dry ingredients mixed together first. So take your time combining this, just make sure you're not squeezing it. Um, and you also want to still look for any shells. If you feel any, of course, just take them out. But after you get done combining it, it should look just like this. Now we're gonna add the wet ingredients. We're gonna squeeze a half a lemon. You wanna use a strainer, um, or if you have one of those little um, devices where you can squeeze it, go ahead and use it. I got it, but the lemon was too big. So you want to do half of a lemon and then you're going to take one egg and you're going to crack that into a separate container and you'll see why later. But now we're going to beat that one egg. You're going to make sure it is beaten. It is well combined. So the reason why I asked you guys to do this separately is to prevent any shells being into the mixture and then it's easier to beat the egg first and then add it versus trying to just crack the egg in and whisk it up. So now we're going to add one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. Um, if you do not know how to pronounce it, don't worry about it. Um, you see what it is. I showed you guys what it is. You're going to add that to the beaten egg and then you're going to mix those two together. So you're going to do this um, for about a minute or so. You do want to slowly do it because it can splatter everywhere. It is wet ingredients and this mixture can stain and it is hard to get up a raw egg. You have to use whatever you're using and then just throw it away if anybody didn't know that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add that mixture to the crab. Now before you combine that, what we're going to do is add one fourth cup of mayo. So this is the brand that I use in mostly all my videos. Um, I use this. I'm not sponsored, but when I explain to use mayo versus mayonnaise, this is what I'm referring to. It's the brand. If you use mayonnaise, like the Herman's, I think that's how you pronounce it. It's a little bit looser. It's more of a dressing. So you can argue with yourself in the comments. Go ahead. But that's why. So now we're going to add two tablespoons of sour cream. So before you add the wet ingredients, what you're going to do is take out half of the dry crab mixture. After you add the wet ingredients, you are going to mix the wet ingredients into the crab. And then you are going to take the other half of the crab meat. You're going to put that in there and then you're going to mix it together. You can mix everything together if you want to. This is just a technique that I use just to make sure that everything is well coated. Because again, we are making crab cakes. We just turn them into sliders. So after you get that combined, what you're going to do is add one tablespoon of Dijon mustard. If you do not have Dijon mustard, either remove it or substitute it for spicy mustard. So now what we're going to do, instead of mixing it, we're going to fold it in. You do not want to over mix this because we want them to be nice and fluffy. So after you get done folding everything in, your mixture should look just like this. And now we have one more ingredient that we're going to add, which is going to be panko crumbs. You are going to add two cups of panko crumbs and then you're going to do the same technique by just folding it in. If you do not have panko crumbs or if you just can't find them, go ahead and use some seasoned bread crumbs. Those are normally seasoned with just Italian seasonings. Now what we add the panko crumbs for is to hold the moisture in. The egg and the mayo is the binder and then the bread crumbs or the panko crumbs acts as a shield to hold the moisture in, leaving them nice and juicy. So now what you want to do is take some um, crackers, Ritz crackers, whichever one you have, and you are going to crush them up. They do not have to be fine. They can be roughly crushed up. They just have to be crushed. Now it is time to actually form the crab cakes. You can do them as big or as small as you like, but whatever bread that you have, make sure that it does fit the bun. So I am using some brioche bread that I got from my local Italian market. Um, it is a bakery inside, so I get all my bread from there. That is mostly where I get like all my fresh ingredients from. The word brioche and brioche is correct. Um, brioche is French, brioche is English. For well, anybody that thinks that I'm saying it wrong or I don't know what I'm talking about, go ahead and Google it or take a culinary course. So this is what this should look like. Um, as you should see, it's not 
big it should resemble the bun so what we're going to do next is we are going to freeze these for at least 30 minutes just to hold that shape so what you're going to do now is take a cast iron skillet you're going to put two tablespoons of oil and one tablespoon of butter in the pan then you're going to lay your crab cakes in you're going to cook these for four minutes per side and once you're done they should look just like this so now we are going to butter yash buns um you just want to take a paper towel and remove the excess oil and then lay that in the same pan so now we're going to make some spicy mayo there is a link in the description to the first video to show you how to create this and now we are just going to assemble the crab cake sliders so you're simply just going to take some of the spicy mayo and you are going to put that at the top and the bottom you do not want to soak the bun so the videos that i have with the um spicy mayo is going to be the salmon burger video and then i have the popeye spicy chicken sandwich copycat video i did it in the air fryer edition so i'll provide both videos so now we're just going to prep the toppings which is just tomatoes and lettuce i have some lemon wedges here as well you are simply going to just add the tomatoes and the lettuce and then you're going to add the crab cakes on. Now the lemon can be a garnish, but right when the crab cakes come out of the pan, you want to squeeze a lemon one wedge on both of them. So now you are completely done and it's time for you to serve and they should look just like this. So let me know how you guys like this recipe and I will see you in my next video.